Uh, 42 years ago, when I was about 20 years of age, straight after high school, I started a fascination with what we call magic squares, which ultimately generated something called atomic art. I, so this is a, an atomic art pattern called the magic square of 11 by 11. But you're not seeing the numbers. So if I turn it around, I laminated it because it showed up here the early scribble I'd done and some other patterns. So this is, I've, I've kept this as a record because it was my first magic square of 11 by 11. And where did it come from? So it actually came from, I'm in the Adjar bookstore in Sydney, and there's this book called The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. The Gospel of the Holy Twelve, or it's got another name, The Gospel, um, we'll take this off here. Yeah. It's, it's called The Gospel of the Perfect Life. And the reason why it's special is that it actually contained... It contained, um, it was found, translated by Emmanuel Swedenborg. It contained mystic symbols of the Star of David with the golden ratio symbol. It claimed to be written by a disciple of the Master. It had lots of cryptic things here about Alpha and the Omega. Um, it's like one of those Bibles that had the missing 18 years of Jesus. How come Jesus' first 18 years, where was he? He went to Tibet and India. And in the back here, in the appendix, um, there's this magic square of seven by seven and see the cross in the middle? The cross in the middle also adds up to the same as the columns and the rows. So that's the seven by seven, which is called the parable of the seven palms. But then there was another one called the magic square of 11 by 11. So these numbers that I'm showing you here is where I got these numbers from. The magic square of 11 came by joining a line from one to two to three to four. So that was my early... Um, inquiry into what we call sacred mathematics and this bible you know had labyrinths it had beautiful labyrinths that inspired me and it also had the final diagram here there's magic squares of three from tibet and there's that and it showed the floor plan the, the ground plan of a christian church where the apostles worship, which is all sacred geometry so this book inspired me but it was sitting in the agile bookstore right up there and it was up actually ready to fall out. So what I did was I jumped up to tap it in, but instead of tapping it in, I picked it up and it was just a Bible, early Christian Essene Bible full of magic squares. So that generated my journey. So I've um, read it 10 times and I re I took all this information and wrote the same thing again. It's called the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. And that's actually a seven by seven magic square, which is one of my beautiful decals that I put on glass it's a clear adhesive transparency so that's called the gospel of the holy 12 and in here um in here we have um we have the same from the original Essene bible i rewrote the parable of the seven palms so i started off looking at the 11 by 11 and which was called the it was a special symbol for the christian kingdom but I'm going to talk a little bit about the parable of the seven palms from this Bible here. So, so what I did was I um, wrote it. I wrote it in a book in 1990. So I wrote this book called the Book of Harmony Squares. It was published in 1990, and originally the title is Magic Squares, but people at the time thought magic meant something else. So. When I was working in schools, the schools didn't like the word magic square. So I wrote it in the Book of Harmony Squares, and it's all handwritten. This is a beautifully handwritten book, and every board is original, beautiful calligraphy. So I put a lot of love into this um, magic square book. But in the last section, there was a section on magic squares of seven. So I'll just take this out. So we can see here... This is the magic square of seven. It was based on the parable of the seven palms in this Essene Bible that was translated by Emmanuel Swedenborg. So this magic square was sitting in an urn in Tibet for 2,000 years, and it wasn't translated until someone from Switzerland, a world a Bible translator called Emmanuel Swedenborg, translated it. Um, so I'm doing a chapter called How Many Squares of Seven? So we're looking at magic squares of seven. I've got this one here, and I'm going to read you the parable of the seven palms that was written in the Bible. I'll just grab my glasses. And then I'm going to explain the symbolism of it. So we know that every column and row adds up to 175. That's the beauty of this magic square of seven. 
But the beautiful thing about it is that the central cross, one, two, three, four, five, these five numbers plus those two also add up to 175. And also the cross going this way. So the cross going, these five numbers plus 49 and one is another cross. So the Christians had a lot of significance to this. And I'll just read out what I wrote here. So this is about Jesus going into the desert and he meets, there's 49 people and he says, you go here, you go there. And he was trying to say that everyone had a particular place in the divine kingdom. So the parable of the seven palm goes, and Jesus, when he came to a certain place where the seven palm trees grew, gathered his disciples around him and to each he gave a number and a name, which he only knew who received it. And he said unto them, stand ye as pillars in the house of God and show forth the order according to your numbers, which ye have received. And they stood around him and they made a body four square and they counted the number and could not. And they said, Lord, we cannot. And Jesus said, let him who is greatest among you be even as the least and the symbol of that which is the first be as a symbol of that which is the last. And they did so and in every way there was equality and yet each bore a different number and the one side was as the other and the upper was as the lower and the inner as the outer. And the Lord said, it is enough. Such is the house of the wise master builder. Four square it is and perfect. Many are the chambers, but the house is one. Again, consider the body of man, which is the temple of the spirit. For the body is one united to its head, which with it is one body. And it has many members, yet all are one body. And the one spirit ruleth and worketh in all. So also is the kingdom. So I just wanted to say, so in my early 20s, I um, stumbled upon this book at the Adjar Bookstore, a beautiful Christian Essen Bible, and it just spoke to me. And it's the one book that launched off all my inquiry into sacred mathematics. So just to conclude, I just wanted to add a little bit more about what those numbers mean to the early Christians. Um, so the Essen magic square of seven is the mystic symbol of him who regarded everything by number and by measure and which seems to have reference to the period of his mortal life, 49 years, that seven squared, as well as the number of the council, cardinals and priests of the church, universal, 48 presided over by its head, 49, which the action of Jesus seemed to symbolize and in, and in a way foreshadow. This most ancient magic seal of Christ, the high priest, the at one -er and atonement of all things, the Lord, our Lady, Jesus Maria, is one of the most ancient and sacred symbols of the Christian religion, extending, extending back to pre-Christian antiquity and symbolizing the restoration of the primeval order to the universe, universe bringing order out of confusion. In this most curious and mystical combination of numbers, we have 21 summations of 175. So this, Kabbalist, this Kabbalistic number added was the number of Christ amid the 12. Seven rows, five verticals with two transverse numbers. And just so it goes on and on, I just wanted to let you know that um, when we read the Bible, it's written in a different code. It's written in parables. So when Jesus was talking about the seven palms, they made the above the same as the below. The left was the same as to the right. And what mag and why magic squares are such powerful symbols is that if we merely took one number out of this matrix, and the word matrix means womb, it would no longer be magic. It's no longer harmonic. So Jesus is talking about a parable of the divine kingdom, that we all have our specific place. No one's better than anyone else. And that's why mathematics is beautiful. The left is the same as the right. The top was the same as the bottom. And it just rang a bell. So that's what I love. And the problem, the question that arises was, why was this information not kept in the Bible? There's obviously been many translations. So I just wanted to acknowledge that um, even though this has name, no name to it, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve was an Essene text that basically launched my inquiry and journey into the mystical language, the mystical universal language of numbers and harmony.